And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Mountain Diana. This is a deck that is going to be all about invoking. If you haven't seen this one before, it's one that I've, I've played quite a bit. I really like it because it is all about invoking, but it uh, is able to play a real low curve. I like that. I like having a, a low curve and being able to get things on the board right away. As you see, we have nine one mana units, for example. We can get things on the board right away, but still have a great late game, and that's what we have. The reason why we're called Mountain is because we're a Targon Allegiance deck. Mountain Scryer is the Targon Allegiance card, and so we're Mountain Scryer um, with Diana with some Nightfall. Um, and so yeah, so we're making two changes with the, with the new metagame and also with the new cards. Before we had two Hush, um, we're going to cut that down to just one Hush with it uh, not being as good as it was before. Um, without getting all the fleeting copies and everything. So we're going to just play one Hush, and we're going to play a Guiding Touch instead to help us against all the aggro. There's a lot of aggro with Discard Aggro and, and Pirate Burn and things like that. So we're going to try one one Guiding Touch over the second Hush. And then, because uh, we already we are, we do have the three Star Shapings for Nexus Healing, and so we're just adding in just a little bit more Nexus Healing with that Guiding Touch. Um, and then the other change is I'm going to take out Bastion with Bastion now being a four-mana card. Our deck isn't really... Like before, we just played Bastion because it was just so good. We don't really need Bastion. The, the, yeah, we just don't really need it. So we're going to just take that out and play a second Sunburst with Sunburst. I feel like Sunburst is a pretty important card these days with a lot of Trundles and Trindomirs running around. But then even against the aggro decks, like a lot, like most the Pirate Burns playing Gangplank. Gangplank is uh, really tough. You really want to be able to kill that. So you have that. Plus, or like Jack the Winner. Um, like those are really good Sunburst targets. Um, even against discard aggro, killing like Jinx, that's a really good target. Uh, so there's there's some good targets for Sunburst in the metagame. And of course, we want to play, we're playing like Sunburst, not Vengeance, um, because we want as many Targon cards as possible, because we are the Allegiance deck with the Mountain Scryer. Plus against like Trindomir, <clears throat> like I was saying, or Commander Ledros, you do get to silence so they don't get those things back. Spacey Sketcher is not going to be as good because a big part of our deck was... You know, getting the hush fleeting copies, discarding those to Spacey Sketcher, that's not going to happen. But still, I think I think we're going to keep Spacey Sketcher with the invoke cards that are three or less so powerful. Uh, we still have like the 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 combo with Duskbringer, right? Duskbringer makes this thing. We discard this thing. It's a great combo. All right. Anyway, let's go. Let's go try it out. We got Mountain Diana. We're gonna go play our five games in ranked. Here we go. We're going deep. Deep with Twisted Fate. Hmm. Alright, we're going to just mulligan the expensive cards. Even Spacey Sketcher. I'm not sure about Spacey Sketcher here, because Spacey Sketcher we don't really play on turn one. We're just going to keep the Diana and send everything else back. Oh, well, we got a, a Nightfall hand, that's for sure. So I could play Solari Soldier as a 3-3 and, you know, attack for 3. But I have all these Nightfall cards in hand. I think we're going to need some help turning on some Nightfall stuff. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. By the moon's crescent blade. All right, I just want to play some Nightfall cards. Devotion to Get them out of my hand. At least one. I'm only considering just casting Pale Cascade to do two damage and draw a card, but. Signing against it. Clad in shining sunlight. I'm going to be casting Unspeakable Horror this turn. That's a bunch of sea monsters. Those will come back with the Nautilus. That's number two. I would have liked something else to play right there. Um, like the Lunari Shade Stalker. That would have been good. Scourge is probably too expensive. 
Let's go with the trickster. I know these paths well. Have some elusive stuff going on here. So I can cast two Pale Cascades. Oh, no, we don't level up Diana even with that. Dead Loom Wanderer is a good one. Punish transgressions. I cannot turn back. So they go back to 20. Come, a new phase awaits. I just go back to 20. Okay, Soul Raider, are you talking about like Freljord Shadow Isles? Like those kind of decks? Like your, your Trundle decks? We're going to need some good invoking. They are deep. Got a bunch of sea monsters. Dead Bloom Wanderer, real good card. Especially what, with what I was doing. Worth at least twice as much. Don't really want them to challenge my trickster. Oh, come on. Glory. So now if I don't play anything, they could just pass. I guess they'd challenge my trickster. Ah, the I can't I can't afford to allow them to just pass. Cool. Didn't kill Diana. Daylight fades and dust suits. As the moon rises, quiet reflection begins. I didn't really like any of those. I guess I don't have to play that Silence of Follower yet. We can play this. I don't get both Pale Cascades, though. That's a problem. That's a problem. Revolution is in the nature of moon and stars. Probably just need to fire off these Pale Cascades a lot earlier. I'm not sure. Blood and salt. Is this just silence at this round? Yeah, it's just silence at this round. Still, I wonder if that's necessary to the Nautilus so they can't play any other sea monster. They'll take six damage from that. Okay, so they did attack. You won't be silenced. You were misguided. Oh, we took down a Nautilus. That's not too easy. Okay, yeah, you've been finding the deeps difficult for our deck. Ours is the one true light. We're still one away from Aurelian Soul. We haven't had any Obliterate cards, like, you know, with all of our Nightfall stuff. Like, Solari Priestess finding Obliterate. Probably be pretty important. All right, so we're playing four mana still, so I'd have one extra mana this turn. I'm not sure, like, I'm basically just not sure when we ever play this Cosmic Inspiration. What did the stars I'm gonna take this Messenger. Silence that thing. Was that a glimmer of starlight I saw? 
Seems like the messenger can just jump block and draw me another card. Ouch. That hurts, I need those blockers. They didn't have that Devourer to get rid of my Diana. We were going to hit them for just a ton of elusive damage. So I could stay... I could keep Atrocity from killing me by blocking like this. I would keep Atrocity from killing me, but great block. I guess I guess we just have to do that, though. Okay. We do that. Yeah, the Double Jaw Hunter is pretty good, too. I mean... I think overall the most important thing that they had in this game was, uh, I guess we just take this big elusive. Yeah, just take this big elusive and try to kill them. Most important thing they had this game were the Deadbloom Wanderers. So we're, we can't die to, cool, they just got rid of a couple elusives. Can't die to Atrocity. They're probably out of elusives now. They can still have good, get rid of a Withering Whale. I was gonna say, they can still have like Withering Whale, Grass of the Undying to gain a little bit of life, because this is gonna be 11, eight. Now they'll pay attention. All right, but that's my plan. Ah, the third Withering Whale. Well, we had a plan. I could have played it safe and just played a bunch of things out on defense. Midrange Frostbite. My pick for for like the best deck. I, I'm a huge fan of Midrange Midrange Frostbite. We're gonna be playing that fourth today. Um, let's look at the star shaping. All right, I like Unspeakable Horror. I don't think I'm gonna just play the Duskbringer turn one. If they play Omenhawk turn one, do I play it to block Omenhawk? Maybe. But I think I'd need like the Dustbringer to help turn on some Nightfall and then also use the the Dust to turn on Nightfall stuff as well. They forced us to choose. Because now if they have like the 3-1 or the 5-1, like all of like their two mana cards basically have one health. If they have any of those, we can unspeakable horror. Could also technically play Diana this turn if we would choose. Lunari, rise! House Spider, that's different. That is different. This could certainly be a waste. We will see, especially against... It could be me just being really impatient, and I should be waiting for Trifarian Glory Seeker. Or Ice Veil Archer. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Obliterate two things or a traveler. Calm mind and open heart greet the night. I know your true heart. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna play that instead of Diana. Right away. 
find your own light within the darkness. Yours is a light I cherish, Queen Sister. Hmm. That's too bad, especially with um, these pale cascades in hand. Take a golden sister. That should be pretty good next turn. Getting a couple of those. You cannot hold us down. So we're doing good card wise. We have almost twice as many cards as they do. Can't have supernova next turn if we need it. It's not too bad. It's not the best, but it's not too bad. It could be worse. Oh wait, do I? Oh, I don't have a. Actually, I don't have an invoke card anymore, do I? So we trade a six mana card for their one mana card. So I cannot go Mountain Scryer Supernova next turn. I would need one more mana. All unbelievers will see the light. Today we fight as one. All right, what else we got? Oh, one mana from Golden Sister. I'm still taking that. We chart our path by the stars. Oh, behind you, a yeti! Yetis? There's no such thing. We are one mana away from playing Golden Sister this turn. That would have been nice. These stories were true. All right, so if I play this, we have seven, so I don't get Supernova. So I can go Supernova or Golden Sister. I feel like they're gonna play another card before combat. Maybe not. We'll just go. Let's just go, Golden Sister. This is fine, especially with Pale Cascade. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. You block here. You block here. You block here. They're gonna have their frostbite cards. Let's actually go this round. We're taking seven. So they frostbite my. We could just go here and then just go pill cascade on this thing. Let's try this. All right, so all my stuff dies, all their stuff stays alive. That's not a great combination. Yay, no looks of iron. Ding beast. Discipline and conviction. Do I have time for Aurelian Soul? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hello, Room Terra. Let's rock. Especially how we have the heal your Nexus 5. Okay, well that's scary. That is scary. Now they'll pay attention. Stand together. I guess I'm dead. 
The guilty will bear. No mercy for heretics. Okay, going down to four. The cosmos will collapse eventually. So we can heal two with Doom Beast. But obviously they can do twelve, so. Captain Perrin's good. Honestly, who Stop. Alright, playing against Burn. So we got our extra guiding touch in here. I will mulligan the Lunari Priestess. Keep the rest. I'm really glad we have Solari Priestess. I think this is one of the best cards in our deck for sure. We haven't had Solari Priestess at all in the first two games. And I, I think that's a card that we've been missing. Now, with that being said, the first two games are going to be better matchups for Solari Priestess than this one. Because it is still a 3 mana 1-2, so it's kind of slow. It's small. So I could play Spacey Sketcher, get rid of the dust. If I do that, I don't have Hail Cascade available. Which that's probably fine. Perfect. Especially when we can find the Serpent. Which was the card I wanted to find. What about you, Dustbringer? Do I trade you? Nah. So that works out. So we're both at four cards. We have a two one. They can just have a Draven now. Um, so I can go Soldier Pale Cascade, but that's still not stopping uh, the Meteor Shower. That's not stopping. The uh, spinning axe. Time for the money makers. Got axes need All right, so we'll just have meteor shower take down Draven and the scrap scuttler. Sure. Excited a one team. We did spend three mana on the card. Draven out. So basically now we gotta worry about Jinx. Lunari, rise. I think they want to use spinning axe there, I'm fine with that. Um, we do have another Solari Priestess, which is very good. Jinx? To help find an answer for Jinx. There we go. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. That's just not even worth it. I'm gonna save the five life. We're gonna block. But we'll just keep that thing at one health. Uh, let's see, so this is costing five. Okay, next turn is turn six. So we'll have eight mana. All right, so basically my plan was I could play Mountain Scryer first and then go Meteor Shower afterwards, because, you know, that, that costs eight mana. But on second thought, I don't want to make it easier for them to level up their Jinx. And, like, if I go Mountain Scryer and they have the six mana card that just does, like, does three and kills it, and then I don't even get to play it, that would be a nightmare. All right, cool. You just want to spend your mana? That's fine with me. I feel like they're waiting for me to play something, and then they're going to play their... Yeah, see, that that's what I was... I felt like they were waiting for Augmented Experimenter. Immerse yourself in the... Cool, I'm glad to see another Augmented Experimenter get discarded. Am I going to have time for you, Cosmic Inspiration? Cargo 
Maybe not. Please not kill my mountain scryer. I would not appreciate that. <laughs> yes, we uh, we've tried so far. We've played with scouts with stony suppressor, and I was pretty happy with how that went. I liked it there. Okay, let's see. Let's lead with the trickster. Rules are made to be broken, like villains or people. So I could go. And we have. Oh, my Dan. My Diana's only at one out of four. Okay, yeah. I just want to use the sunburst here. I think this is just a really good use of sunburst. Hopefully, kill the Jinx before it levels up. Okay, it does level up, but that's still, that's two Jinx down. So it's two Jinx down, one Draven down, two Augmented Experimenter. So I feel good about where we are. I'm just going to save my Serpent. Yes. No. Hmm. Want my serpent to be a little bit of a surprise. And it's very good to have uh, the serpent with... Yeah, there we go. GG's. With Nightfall cards. Same matchup. It's a real popular deck right now, this discard aggro. And it's... And for good reason. It's putting up great results. Um, good. Gotta get our cheap things. Hello. Um, I'll go ahead and play this. Definitely considering waiting. But their ability to just go very, very wide, very quickly. Um, yeah, glad I got the two one in play. So as we've seen in, in other matchups, I definitely will. Uh, wait at times. Deal four, deal one. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. Since we played the one drop, I don't have. I won't be able to play the meteor shower the next turn. That's going to be different. I'm not sure what our rank is right now, because you know it was just reset a little bit ago, and I'm not sure exactly where we're at Time after the, the reset. Please do not have to get excited. happen. No get excited. Yay. That's pretty big. Alright, looks like Draven will arrive. 
meteor shower. Do have an extra spitting axe. We'll take out Draven and his fan. You know, all the Draven cards. Ooh, got rid of an Augmented Experimenter, which probably means another Augmented Experimenter on the way. Ignorant thrall. I know it's like not a, a great trade, but I just feel like any trades are good trades for our deck. And like this kind of late game that we have and everything. Just take any trades. Um, so I already have a Sunburst for one Jinx. This would be a Fallen Comet for another Jinx. Or we play a Traveler. It's tough, I'll play the Traveler, but I could definitely see myself regretting not having that for another Jinx. Um, let's get Moon Silver. I could go like Moon Silver now. Now we just get this. So let's see, I could, I could have Moon, Moon Silver Mind Splitter the next turn. But no, I mean, you gotta always kill, you gotta kill Jinx. And so we're gonna just Sunburst. This next turn we're gonna be Sunbursting Jinx. Kind of no matter what. And so then the next turn. Next turn, I'll either Supernova or Traveler. Okay. We'll do that. Perfect. Alright, so one Jinx down. There's the next one, so we're definitely going Supernova next turn. We'll just do any trades. I know your true heart. One two is better against one one. <clears throat> um. Oh yeah, Brees, you're asking. So, local time. Okay, so we just drew Sunburst, so we could play Sunburst instead of Supernova, which might as well, right? Just cost less mana. Obviously, we don't really need to supernova the others, the other scrap scuttler. But Jinx is so important that I would be willing to spend nine mana to get rid of Jinx this turn. It's just that important. All right, another Draven discard. So, all three Dravens down. Yes, all three Dravens down and two Jinx down. So now we got to try to keep them from going wide if we can. I just wish I could be playing two things. With 12 mana, if I play Star Shaping, we would have 7. So if we get something that would cost 7, we would be able to play that. Guess I just take it all. <laughs> That's not a good thing to for cost 7. Alright, so my plan... Oh, man, and then they had the third Jinx was the last card. Wow, that... That could win it for them. Wow, what a last card. That's basically the only card <laughs> in their whole deck that I'd be scared of. Oh. Alright, so we're going to... Uh, so if I cast Supernova, we have four mana still. So I still get multiple blockers. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. Those are elusives. Still probably fine. Yeah, we're good. Now they're out of Jinx. Um, so 
So I'm pretty sure we should be fine. We're going to discard Hush. Yeah, we'll take the take the free serpent. Oh, no reason, I guess, not to attack with the three three. Um, it would get some damage on it. I was I was planning on clearing these things up with cosmic rays. We'll probably still just be fine. Attacking with the three with the three three. We've played six so far this game. What would you divine from my stars? Yours is the light. The now seven travelers on this joy always finds its mark. GG's. All right, two and two. Even if you would turn like a, even if there was like a spell that could turn like your slow speed spell into a burst speed spell, um, I don't think that that would really even be too good. Cause you know, like your, that could, that could be something that could be printed. I don't know what kind of mana cost that, that kind of card would be. All right, we're gonna keep the rest of these. Cause think of like burst speed, Ruination. <laughs> That'd be kind of silly. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. So the jury rig is the problem with attacking with this serpent. But I think that, overall, I, I think that that still wouldn't be that bad for me. Yeah, jury rig. Clad in shining sunlight. All right, let's see. Let's go with our Solari Priestess. And... I think I maybe just, just take this Obliterate... Yeah, because we just have to be able to obliterate Jinx as soon as they play Jinx. I want to play the Traveler to be able to get more cards, but we should be able to be just fine as far as getting more cards is concerned. Devotion through battle. Yeah, I used to, Brees. Time for the money makers. That's fine. That's a spinning axe that's not going on the Draven. It's fine with me. Ooh, I like Diana. I don't necessarily want to just use... Well, obviously we don't have the mana, but I wouldn't really want to use the... Um, Falling Comet on the Draven. I don't want to play Diana right now. I guess we won't. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do this turn. Okay, never mind. Turn just got a whole lot better. <laughs> so I was thinking, it's like, what are we actually gonna be doing this turn? Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. 
Okay. So. It's gonna be challenging the Draven. Yours is a light I cherish. And please no. Please no get excited. It wouldn't be too surprised. Like, obviously, we don't want to see Get Excited. It wouldn't be too surprising for them to have it because they just threw away Get Excited earlier. Darn, so they do have another one. So that hurts. I saved two life by blocking Draven. Yeah, I want to draw like star shaping. Star shaping would be very good to draw. Be able to just help protect. And of course, Jinx yes, you and me, is the only card we don't want to see on their side. I guess I should have passed. So I needed to obliterate Jinx. I guess I should have passed. Instead of playing the Sunburst. Needed to pass. Um, yeah, like I... So if I pass and if they would have just done the same thing and then I kill the, the Jinx instead of the Draven, then my turn I'm able to play like my 1-2 and my 2-1 and I'm able to have more blockers that next turn on turn 7 and, and I get the double invoke. And we could have seen what that would have gotten us. Maybe would have gotten something else very good, so... Um, that cost me that game for sure. No, star shaving would not have saved me. Um, we were we were we were down at one life with no blockers because they just get they were get exciting me, which is going to do three damage to me, and they were also getting a super mega death rocket that was going to do four damage to me. So I was going to be at one life, and I had no, and it was also going to kill my blocker. So I have no blockers, so no, not a star shaping one would, would not have saved me. All right, so we ended up going two and three. Um, two and one against that discard burn deck. That matchup felt pretty good. Um, yeah, that, that matchup felt pretty good. I think that I'd be pretty confident in winning that matchup a, a real high percentage of the time, uh, continuing to play that over and over. And so I liked I liked our build. I liked our our changes that we made. Um, I don't. So I don't think we necessarily maybe need more guiding touches. And honestly, maybe we just don't even need this guiding touch. All three, like all three of those games that we played, we, we never had Guiding Touch and it didn't seem like something that was too necessary. Um, so we could probably, you could probably replace Guiding Touch. I just don't know exactly what to play. You could play like a Lunari Shadestalker. Um, you know, I want to keep, want to keep the, the Targon count high. There's just a, a lot of options and there's nothing that I love, you know, so we could have Bastion. Um, yeah, lost a frostbite mid range, but I think, I kind of think, everything kind of loses to frostbite mid range when frostbite mid range has a good, good hand and and uh, you know they're doing their thing. I, I don't really feel bad about that loss. Um, yeah, could play a second hush, but hush didn't really seem like a card that we really needed to be casting. Hush is good against frostbite, I suppose, if you can un unfrostbite your own thing. I don't know. So just keep it as the guiding touch for now, but but that's that's a flex slot. So you know, like if you have with that guiding touch, if you have any other Targon card that you want to play that you want to try out, um, feel free to take out that guiding touch for anything else. But if you just want to make sure that you are a little bit better against aggro, and you want to keep it in there, that's good. That's probably what I would be doing here as well. All right, anyway, there we go. There's Mountain Diana. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.